Hi, good afternoon. This is Steve O'Hare from PIA First. Uh, welcome to the webinar today. Uh, the webinar today, I'm going to discuss some um, key characteristics of trading that people sometimes forget about. Uh, and I'm going to start from a, maybe a, a beginner's point of view. So, but I'll, I'll keep it, try and keep it as uh, interactive as, pos as possible. Uh, feel free to throw questions at me and um, and discuss as we move along. Uh, I've, I've created a PowerPoint to assist with uh, the points I'm trying to make and the points I'm trying to get across. And hopefully um, even the seasoned traders and seasoned veterans among you might find uh, what I present today as, as useful. Uh, a bit of a rundown on me. I, I started trading uh, way back in the late 80s um, on the commodity markets, the Baltic Exchange. And I moved from there to the financial markets, the open outcry uh, life law at the Royal Exchange and later at Cannon Bridge. Uh, I, um, I worked for various companies trading uh, and then traded from, for myself from 1995. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll talk about and discuss maybe a little bit of my history as we move through the slides presentation. Uh, and uh, maybe sort of like reminisce over the what 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 happened uh, as I developed as a trader. Um, I now work for PIA, and we present daily trade ideas, medium term trade ideas for uh, online exchanges, uh, banks, hedge funds, prop groups, professional traders, retail traders. Uh, we try to present our trade ideas in an understandable format with a clear uh, trade idea. Uh, of where to buy, where to sell a product, the target and the stop loss. We try and incorporate this on over 25 products on a daily basis. Uh, it's no mean feat, uh, but we have uh, gained a, a decent following and um, we've turned it into a successful business and uh, we hope this for this to continue obviously in the future. And I, I just want to uh, use my trading expertise to, to get some points across today. So uh, instead of giving the medium term view on the commodities and equities that we normally host on a, on a Monday, I'll try, I'm trying something different. So you may have to bear with me. Um, I may waffle for a while, uh, but hopefully you'll be able to uh, take something away from this and your feedback afterwards would be very much appreciated. So let me share my uh, screen. Um, Let's find the PowerPoint that I'm looking for. Here we go. Um, hopefully you can see the screen I'm sharing right now. I'll ask this question just in case people can't hear me. trading screen uh, do let me know there's a, there's a little bit of a pause on my um, my screen now let me just take you back here hopefully you can see it now Pam can see it thank you Pam Okay, I didn't can see it now, so I'll, I'll continue. Profiting from trading. Um, this basically is, a, is the theory we put behind our trade ideas. And um, although the trade ideas may look very um, quick and, and straightforward, there's a lot that uh, it's based on. So I'll, um, I'll start off with a few basic things that every trader should have a good grasp on. So there's trader psychology, which we'll be discussing in, in, in quite a bit of detail. I'm not a psychologist, uh, but I understand trader psychology. 
I understand what uh, a, a trader has to do uh, from the psychological side to to uh, give himself more chance of success. And uh, I'll be uh, going into a lot more detail on this um, and basically just uh, breaking it down into what the key points of the, the psychological side of, of trading is. Um, there's there's lots of uh, detail out there on, on how to become a great trader and what it takes to become a great trader. And uh, you can have the best strategies and ideas in the world, but if you, you they, they're not applied in the right uh, psychological state, if your head's not in the game, it's not in the right place, then these great trade ideas can, can fail miserably. And, and that is, uh, so it's key, it's key to, to get your head right, be confident in what you do, have your setup correct, both from a, um, an understanding of your target, an understanding of your stop, uh, and an understanding of the market that you're trading. That takes us on to market psychology. Uh, there's a lot of traders I've spoke to over the years, and myself, I've traded all the markets over the years, um, the, 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 the major markets. And so some markets I do have a problem with trading. I, I, I basically can't get my head in tune with the actual characteristics of each market, because each market does have its own characteristics. Uh, you have participants in each market which trade uh, for a whole variety of reasons and um, they have different time frames that they're trading over and all these market participants make up the market um, and they're not necessarily the same throughout the the whole spectrum of uh, trading markets that we can trade nowadays so understanding the market that you're trading is key and um, and it's, it's building up an idea of, of where as a trader, you or what you have to go through to find that market that you trade. You, you may be a, a, a long-term trader with, with a, an outlook um, or a fundamental trader with a, with a view on uh, why a market should be priced somewhere fundamentally or uh, from a long-term perspective. And then you might find yourself trading intraday on, on, a, on a DAX or the Dow Jones. And you can quite easily um, fall into a trap of thinking you, you understand the market and, and maybe thinking that you know more than the market knows, that thinking that market's not priced at the right place. And you may be right, but the, the, the timing of that might be completely wrong and, and your profile as a trader um, may not be suited to the actual market that you're trading and you could be better placed in another market. And it, so it's all a, a case of finding the market that's right for you once you understand what type of trader you are. Uh, every trader requires tools to become profitable, become more profitable, um, become consistent, and to make money effectively. That's the idea behind trading. That's what we, the initial draw is the the, the, the draw of uh, the riches that get get plastered all over the uh, the, the media, um, and and again it, it's it's very key for each trader himself to to work out the uh, what tools he, he needs to use in order to achieve the targets that he set himself. So. Analysis is a, is a, is a great uh, tool to use. There's, there's different types of analysis. Uh, we focus essentially on technical analysis, and but also uh, we understand the fundamentals of the markets that we trade, and we understand the fundamentals do affect prices. Um, so we have an overall view of our perception of where the market's going at, at uh, you know, over different time frames, so medium term, long term, you know, obviously, and, and key to, to our, our business models is the short term price action. Now, to, to achieve anything, no matter what you do, uh, but most definitely from a trading perspective, 
it's it's very key to have a trading plan now without a trading plan the, the, the a lot of mistakes can be made and people can go into these markets uh, and there's there's a lot of uh, numbers out there and um, statements out there saying that 90 percent of traders don't make money um, so you know you've got to consider what is what's out there what what people say um, and that there's, there's good reason for 90 percent of traders not making money whether it's a true fact or not i'm not going to argue that point but um, it's something to consider and, and something that we all should to bear in mind when we set out on our trading careers and um, if I go back to the the, um, the trading floors um, on the life trading floor especially you had um, the, the pits you had the traders surrounding you uh, the, the guys on the top step were, were normally the, the corporate traders the the institutional traders um, they would have the the big orders that would uh, affect the market price and the guys right down at the bottom and all the way in between were generally traders trading for themselves now uh, I, I couldn't apply the 90 percent theory to back then the markets were very different back then um, the the emotion of the market was very very evident uh, you could hear emotion in people's voices when when um, the big corporations were trying to like goldman sachs or dean witzer whatever were trying to uh, fill an order for a client and they were selling the, selling the market that was moving away from them you could hear the panic in their voices and as, as a, a local or a self-employed trader down there you'd be trying to uh, make money and you'd take in all, all the the uh, elements around you so you'll take in the the noise element uh, and you could hear and understand panic in people's voices so you knew the market was going lower until that panic stopped or until the noise slowed down and then that was the time for you to cut your short trade which you initiated on the back of the the big corporations throwing their orders in in a panic stricken way so that's just uh you know and things have changed then things have moved on you know the, the movement from the open outcry floors to the to the uh, screen based trading was a was a big big change in the markets um uh, a lot of traders who thrived on the uh life floor and the open outcry markets failed miserably on this as soon as it became screen based they still thought they could um move the market you know move the markets or get the positions that they could on the floor and it, and it, it very quickly uh, fell flat for them um thankfully i was a slightly different type of trader i wasn't one of the bigger traders but i i i, I um i had a trading plan in place and um i would use technical analysis even back then and i would know support levels uh resistance levels um and i would use them support and resistance levels and that was the sort of things that the that the banks were using so i was almost trading in line although i was trading from a local perspective i was trading in line with the banks and the bigger corporations who were using technical analysis way back then uh, and they were using it very successfully so um, but again it all formulated a trading plan in, in my head i had my trading plan nowadays it's a good idea to write trading plans down uh, it's uh, very difficult to do, especially for the more seasoned traders who um, have their trading plan set out in their head. Um, but for new traders and uh, guys who have just come to the market, this is a, a key ingredient to, um, to profiting from your trading, to making sure your trading plan, whatever you do on a daily basis, you write it down. When you make money, you write down the reasons why you've made money. You write down things that you do wrong and you analyze this and you analyze it on a, on a weekly basis and you try to get into better habits and you try and influence your trading to, to the positive side. And a trading plan can do this and it's very straightforward to do. There's plenty of uh, 
uh, examples of training plans on the on the web. Um, I'll try and dig some out if I can, and uh, maybe um, put a link into them. So we're looking at them for key areas, um, and we'll, we'll try and break them down a little bit more so that we can uh, we can delve a bit further. So trader psychology. Now, trader psychology is key, as we said. So there's, there's onus put on trader psychology. If your head's not in the right place, then uh, you, you're, you can very quickly fail, even if your trading strategy is right. So it, it's, it's a case of understanding your trader psychology. Let me just bring up the, the key headlines to this. First of all, it's, 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 not, it's a fair question to ask, why are you trading? Everyone has different reasons for trading. Um, and and we'll we'll again we'll we'll sort of like break that down itself and uh, and talk about that in a bit more detail. Also, the trader inside of you. If I I do believe there's a trader inside of everyone. Everyone has the ability to trade. Um, whether people tap that ability or not is a, is another thing. There may be great traders out there who are doing completely different professions. So, but what is important is to, to work out what type of trader you are and what type of trading strategy best suits you. Because if you're, if you're, if you're not in tune with uh, what type of trader you are, you won't have the right trading strategy for you, you'll very quickly develop losses that could spiral out of control. So, and, um, we'll, so we'll discuss the trader inside of you the trading strategy based around which that trading is on you. The money management side of things, obviously money management is key to running any successful business. Trading is no exception. And again, we'll, we'll go into a little bit more of the, the psychology side of things and how we, de how we can deal with those. So there's a bit more to think about. But let's start with why are you trading. So we have a market draw, and, and it's all over the internet, it's all over the media. The, the draw of the markets is generally, mostly about the, the wealth that can be created from markets. Uh, we, there's plenty of um, films re more recently, um, The Wolf on Wall Street, a classic, um, and uh, you know, and, and then the success of that film is even shows the the inquisitiveness of human nature of, of people never traded before, never involved in markets, lo looking to sort of see what exactly went on back in the day. Um, I can't say I ever came across that actual type of um, trading setup, but um, you know, evidently it did go on. Um, and uh, and there was a there's a real draw to the, to the real riches of that, um, but it, it's obviously key to understanding from our point of view, from a trader's perspective, from each of us that it's not an easy an easy option. You know, trading is not easy. Otherwise, people wouldn't be listening to this um, this clip today or this webinar today. If trading was easy and making money was easy, then we'd all be doing it. And we wouldn't need any assistance and we wouldn't need to talk to other people about it. So it's not easy. So it's, it's understanding that, that it's, uh, trading is a full-time job. It's, um, you know, if, you, if, you're, if it's your main source of income, you have to be at it 24-7. And let's, let's break, again, let's talk about that. How, how is it different nowadays? It's, I mean, accessibility to trading is so much easier than it ever was before. You can have an account set up and start trading within a few minutes. Um, so the accessibility is there. Um, the, obviously, why are you trading? Because you can, you can trade, you, you can access the markets. Um, Back 20 years ago, you had to have a, a, a seat on a, on a trading floor to trade. Um, but also, 
you know, key to that, you had to have money. You had to have money to start to trade. Um, you, you, the idea was to turn that money into more money and to continue that upward spiral. Um, again, we talked about it just a few minutes ago. That's not always the case. If you get into bad habits, if your trading strategy is not right, if your psychology is not right, you won't, be, you won't make money, no matter how good your strategy is. You have to be in the right place. This doesn't apply to algos, obviously, um, but I'm sure the algos aren't watching this. So we've got to be realistic about uh, what we can make um, and and how we can how we can basically trade for a living. Uh, another draw of uh, the trading is the lifestyle. So. Um, Again, we, we have this, it, it, there is an impression out there that traders can trade from the beach or they, they trade from their yachts or whatever. Yeah, that, that does happen, um, but there's not many that do it. So we've got to remain realistic about what our targets are, what our goals are. And um, I, I, I do believe there's a, there's a lot of full-time traders out there whose lifestyle is uh, can can be enhanced and um, compared to the normal nine to five uh, treadmill. There's busy times in the market. There's times when uh, traders know they can be trading and know there's opportunity, especially if they understand their, their their market psychology, their market characteristics. And there's times when it's not worth sitting there in front of the screen. So you can switch it off. You can relax and and get ready for the next session or the next. Uh, the next uh, point in the market. Um, some people just trade for fun. Uh, you know, you, there's demo accounts out there. There's competitions out there. There's uh, there's lots of ways of uh, of getting involved in trading. And some people start trading for fun and then move on to real live accounts and and take it more seriously. They they might find they have a a natural trader inside of themselves screaming to get out. Um, so you know it's uh, it's very much like the poker model where people are enticed to trade po uh, to play the poker games online. Starts off this is a fun game, there's a fun element, and then there's an option there to open a live account and go into that. And so it's it you know it's a very similar with trading again, also the psychology and, and uh, of, of poker players. You know, it can be applied to the psychology of the markets as well. Um, so it all goes to create additional income, whether it's uh, part-time income or full-time income. Um, the you know the, the choices are there. It's, it's down to you as a trader to work out what type of trader you are and what you can you can do to enhance your potential. So. Um, from here, we'll, we'll move on to talk a little bit more about the, the trader inside of you. Now, I like to categorize traders as five different types of trader. Um, a lot of you will be familiar with these, the words and the ways I'm, I'm highlighting these. Uh, and we'll, we'll break it down or, or we'll, um, we'll go over this in a bit more detail. Uh, let me just check that uh, there's no chats I see. Um, so there are a few comments I've missed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's, a, there's um, some good, fair, fair points. Um, I will sort of talk about the oil quickly. Uh, Pan's made a good um, comment. Um, yeah, again, it's all it's all about market psychology. I, I, I'm distracting. If we just hold the trader inside of you for a moment, I'll uh, I'll try and get through a few questions that have been asked. Uh, Pan asks if time allows in your 28 uh, years, any recommendations uh, getting to grips with commodities, especially oil. I mean, I can talk about it from my perspective and and the type of trader I am and the type of trader I was. 28 years ago, I was very much an intraday trader. I would hold positions for a very short period of time, wouldn't hold overnight positions. I've never really changed from that. I always like to close my positions um, and be flat overnight. Um, 
I've, my strategy is changing slightly as, as time goes on. Obviously, my style of trading was almost extinguished by the, the Alvos of, of today. The, the real sort of scalping markets, um, there was an ability to do that to a certain extent uh, when markets moved uh, from 98 on the floor straight onto the screens. There was still the ability to scalp. That now obviously has been taken over by the algos, the computers, the black box systems are replicating what I did, but they're doing it a lot faster, a lot more efficiently and across every single market where I was maybe just focusing on one market. Um, oil for me is, is a, a really interesting market. Uh, it's good to talk about because everyone talks about it. The man in the street talks about it. Everyone talks about petrol prices. So everything's considered. And um, we can all be, we can all consider ourselves experts in oil because we use it on a, on a daily basis. Most of us do. So we, we you know, we understand, we, we, you know, we can get our heads around when oil price goes down, petrol prices go down. So we see petrol prices falling at the pump. So we understand oil price must be going down. It's a natural kick on, but it's, it doesn't really work hand in hand. Obviously, we see that. Oil prices went from $150 to $40. Petrol prices went from £1.50 to just about a pound now. Now, they, they, they don't go hand in hand because obviously then big corporations out there like to make them pennies worth in between. So, uh, but we're a consumer of oil. Um, there's no doubt about it. We've got to look at the long-term prospects for oil. Um, you get solar power, electric, um, you know, where is the need for oil in 10 years from now, 20 years from now? As, uh, as we advance quickly, oil becomes maybe less of a uh, wanted commodity. Um, but let's think about where it is now. It's, it's just hit just below $30. We've had, we're in, in the process of a small bounce from there. Um, and a lot of people are still talking about $20 and, and sub $20. And I'd see no reason why not. Um, but the markets, you know, there's a lot of participants in the markets. There's big traders in the markets. These big traders are, you're talking about economies trading, trading, you know, relying on the oil price. Now, they're big traders. So as a scalper, I'm, sort of, I'm just cannon fodder for them. So I've got to sort of have a bit more of a different approach for oil. I've got to look at oil from maybe a slightly longer term technical picture or a uh, rather than maybe looking at a 15 minute chart in oil, trying to sort of look for these intraday moves, maybe looking at an hourly chart, four hour chart in oil and looking for pattern formations using technical analysis, but also keeping an eye on what's going on around the world keeping an eye on uh, the weather in, in the US, keeping an eye on anything that could impact, keeping an eye on the Far East, so the, 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 the Middle East, keeping an eye on escalations in tensions in, in, everywhere. You know, so there's, there's things that can cause that oil price to spike, but there's, there's, a, there's a glut of oil out there. There's Iran now talking about uh, bringing their oil to the market, you know, Sanctions being lifted, so that th there's everything in the pot at the moment. Um, I, I, I think at the moment in time we're seeing a natural correction in oil. I think it's limited, um, and I think it's limited to just above forty dollars. And, and then I think we'll see another leg down um, because I think there's a lot of people hurting out there, especially on an economic scale, on on a, a, a national scale. So, uh, you know, I think uh, there's more pain to be seen. They, they're not going to be let off this easy. So I think a bit lower. Um, so anyway, that's, that's a little bit on oil. Um, and yes, uh, Bob makes a good point. Um, there's still panic in, in, in the charts and you do see it. And it's, uh, it's, um, it was very easy on the open outcry days because the noise was there and you could hear the panic. You've got, you could rely on your, 
one of your senses that we don't utilize now apart from listening to a squawk maybe new squawk which are, are very important um, depending on what type of trader you are it, uh, it it takes us back to the trader inside of us um, we can be a day trader now a day trader can place or does place multiple orders throughout the day tr maybe looking at a short-term chart maybe relying on, on gut instinct maybe he's got a trading strategy that follows uh, something quite basic um, they generally day traders don't hold overnight risk because they're not comfortable with doing it or because their strategy doesn't allow that um, maybe the funds don't allow it either maybe a day trader uh, doesn't require as much margin as maybe a longer term trader so uh, a day trader may be restricted although they can take advantage of the intraday leverage which is uh, allowed by uh, a lot of the platform providers out there so um, you know day traders look for the opportunities within the day so they'll look at maybe looking at a short term chart and uh, day traders want a quick result or prefer a quick result so there i would never consider myself um, a natural long-term trader i do sort of struggle to hold positions for too long um i uh, i've developed my trading even in the in recent years where i will maybe have an equity bias uh, i maybe you know at this moment in time i'm negative on equities um and you know but, and i've been able to sort of maybe hold a few of my short trades over a few days um and then but even even to, down to last week or even this week i'm looking to buy dips in the market my medium term bias remains negative but on, on an intraday basis there's there's the charts are telling me the uptick that we've seen um has got some decent formations. We've got bullish uh, hammers on it. We've got morning star formations. And that's telling me that the market has potential to go higher. So uh, I'm not gonna fight the market. The market's gonna move. It doesn't matter where I put my uh, bet or my money, the market's gonna move. I'm not gonna have a huge influence on it. So I've got to accept that. Day traders got to accept the bigger traders, the longer term traders will come in and sometimes they'll have an adverse effect to what the market is doing normally. Um, but yeah, so uh, day trade is normally a high frequency, um, quick in, quick out, uh, you know, taking a loss, taking a hit, refresh, start the next trade. Um, one of my key points I'd like to make is what a lot of people say a lot of people talk about that they are oh, I've got a trading strategy my trading strategy has seven or eight winners out of ten 70 or 80 percent winners everyone goes wow that's great that's fantastic I'll have a bit of that and then you look at the the numbers and the seven eight out of ten winners they've made five ten fifteen pips two or three losers have lost 120, 150 pips. So one bugbear that I do have is um, people not giving a strategy enough chance or, or losing sight of what a strategy should be doing. A strategy, a successful trading strategy is not should not be based on how many winners to losers. It should be based on the net PL. Uh, I have strategies which I use sometimes, and my trading strategy, say for instance, if I'm trading intraday on the DAX, I will have for three or four losers, and then I'll have one winner, and that winner would normally make more than the losers have uh, lost. Now, that's following a, 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 mod, a trading model or a trading strategy. Uh, which I, I use from time to time and so I might have eight trades at the end of the day two are winners six are losers and yet I have made way more uh, than you, you would normally expect so it's key to get the your strategy right now that strategy which we'll talk about in a little while is getting the 
risk reward right um, and also maintaining that being disciplined with that and everything else that goes with it so that's just got that off my chest I feel a bit better now um, now we'll talk about swing trader swing trader again is um, looks at maybe slightly bigger swings in the market the moves from the high to the lows rather than the the trading in between they're looking for a, tr a trend and again this is going to be applied to uh, different time frames so you can have a swing trader in an hourly bar, bar market an hourly market you have a swing trader in a day market you can have a swing trader in a monthly market so when swing traders are present in all types of time frames uh, but they like to get confirmation of trends before entering a trade and maybe see reversal patterns uh, don't, uh, similar to um, other types of traders, they don't really listen to the news as much. They're not as intent on the news. Uh, obviously, news bulletins are very important if you're uh, a shorter-term trader. But the swing trader will be just more technical, looking at them uh, levels, ignoring the news that's going on out there or, or ignoring the actual focus news. Uh, but they, the swing trader will have specific entry and exit points, you know, just um, just very well, very similar to a technical trader, uh, like a technical trader, which again you can be a combination of all of these. It's very difficult sometimes to to you know you, utilize all these types of trader, but you can. You can be a longer term trader who use technicals for entry and exit. Um, you can be a fundamental trader who again relies on a, a confirmation from a technical setup. But you know, you can if you're specifically technical, you ignore the fundamental news. If you're specifically fundamental, you ignore the technicals. It's uh, you know they, they can be you can have a combination of both, but you know you can you can be both or you can be just one or the other. It's, it's absolutely there's there's room in the in this trading world for all types of traders. So a technical trader bases most of his uh, idea on uh, utilizing the historical price trends uh, to, to, to forecast the future price. Um, you know, they, they base it on the, the idea that history normally repeats itself. Uh, you've got to ignore the market noise, the breaking news or the, or the you know, the, the, uh, the fundamental news out there. Um, you, you, uh, the pretty mechanical in their outlook and, and utilizing the indicators, building their strategies uh, around maybe moving averages, chart formations, candlesticks. Um, you know, it's, and they tend to use a combination of technical indicators, not just have been fixed on one. There is no holy grail out there. There is no one indicator that will make you money 100 percent of the time it does it doesn't exist not for us anyway goldman sachs probably have something very that works 99 percent of the time i'm sure but uh, is that me just being malicious and spiteful i don't know um yeah so technical trader that's what that's what it is um i use technicals as a tool for my trading uh i have uh a fundamental knowledge of what's going on in the markets I trade. I, I understand the sentiment of the market at the point of time when I'm entering the trade. So I'm, I'm using a, a fusion of all those uh, elements, but um, the technical has got to uh, be right to enter a trade for me. Uh, fundamental traders, fundamental, they look to analyze the, a product asset and look to work out the true value. That true value uh, might not equate to what the price is trading at the time. So a fundamental trader will look for the discrepancies between what they believe is the value of an asset and what the price or the market is pricing at the time. Um, so, you know, they, they, they look for over and undervalued uh, markets and uh, trade on that basis, obviously, with a with a good eye on where the risk is and where their target goal is, where their reward is. Um, fundamental traders will, will look at economic data, companies' earnings, and all the research that's available on the product they're trading. 
so uh definitely uh, a lot of work involved in fundamental trading and uh, and uh, keeping on top of the all the breaking news that affects that uh, that asset now a longer term trader um now they typically a longer term trader would um use a buy buy and hold strategy or a sell and hold strategy depending on which way they believe the market is going um it's good great uh, trying to explain trading to a layman and, and friends and when you say to them oh steve you trade the markets you know what do you think of the footsie um oh i think it's going lower all right okay so you are you not trading then at the moment you have to wait till it goes lower to buy it like, no no i can i can sell the market um and then i can buy it later and and, and a lot of people don't, can't actually get their heads around that so you know it's it's quite funny to 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 think that people who can't understand that there's there's so many people um that don't understand trading and um or don't understand what types of trade you can do and there's there's so many options of doing that type of trading like options binary options again is, is a very um very current uh, buzzword and very current uh, product that people are, are looking to offer from a platform point of view and a, and a trade perspective and an analysis perspective we're looking at a, a model to to look at binary trading um but yeah so it's a longer term trader um moving away from points slightly um keep me on track guys with uh they, they look at footsie the dow and they'll look for a percentage increase maybe look to get a return of five to ten percent maybe over a period of time try and outperform the markets if they can uh but be happy with the normal return of the markets uh longer term traders can you know can, can outperform the markets very simply by maybe uh, selling rallies buying dips running it and at the end of the year the FTSE might still be the same price it was at the start of the year but the longer term trader may have returned 10 percent on his uh, on his fund or whatever so um the longer term traders don't necessarily just sit and hold and they they can also also use cfds as hedging you know so they can maybe you take profit on part of their position through cfds or spread bets or whatever so you know there's there's it's not just longer term traders sit there all day doing nothing but you know there's plenty of um longer term traders who who will have an overall position and be jobbing about in it during the day so again that's where we've talked about when the you can get a combination of um traders and uh using a comp that they, they use a combination of trading styles so um let me just jump back to yeah so there's lots of opportunity out there right now um we'll we'll pop on to from knowing the trader inside of you we're going to go to the trading strategy, basically. Trading strategy, money management and psychology. I don't think we're going to get uh, everything in in this session. Um, but I'll try and quickly go through the money management psychology side of things. So then uh, we can... at least cover a, a section of profiting from trading and maybe what i'll do is i'll introduce the market psychology analysis and trading plan at a later date that might be uh let me know your thoughts guys uh, i'm quite happy to do that uh, rather than rush through everything so trading strategy um get to know your style of trading as i've just as i've gone over just recently it's very uh you've got to know the trader inside of yourself and know your style what suits your style or you develop a style so you have got to do a lot of work before you start to trade and your style might not necessarily uh link with the market you're trading 
So, you know, the groundwork involved, if you're prepared to put that groundwork in, which you should be, if you're risking money, if you're trading money and you want to be successful, put the work in and find a market that better suits you. Now, a, a prime example maybe would be the DAX and the Euro stocks. Uh, the Euro stocks 50, uh, the DAX 30. DAX has, uh, is classes at a much more volatile market. So if your funds or your trading pot is, is quite limited, and say you, you can trade a pound a point in any market that you want. If you are a uh, not necessarily a day trader or haven't got that um, trader inside of you, then the DAX will very quickly uh, make mincemeat of you uh, because um, your style wouldn't, it may not be suited to the volatility of the DAX. To counteract that, there's other markets you could trade. You could then go from, you know, I mean, the DAX, I think the ATR at the moment, the DAX may be about 200 points a day. So at whatever point it makes a high or low, there's a potential for it to have a 200 tick rally or a 200 tick nose type. So if you're trading a pound a point and you, your stop is maybe 10 or 15 points, there's a good chance that whatever time you enter the trade, you're going to get stopped out. Now, if you're, uh, uh, if, so you, you can be limited maybe to what you can trade by your account size. So it's, it's important to clear, it, clear that up before you get started and find a market that would suit your star or maybe your account size, which may be something like the Euro stocks, where that may have a, like a 30 tick uh, average to range. So there, you know, you still can trade that in a pound of points. Uh, your potential upside is, is going to be less than DAX, but your chance of uh, being in the game for longer naturally increases. So, you know, as part of that groundwork, you have to be working hard to find the right market for you to suit your trading style, trading strategy. Uh, Bob's just fired a question in. Steve, I right, trade long term if market takes one, two, three days, even four weeks if needed, but I might just want to use the longer grass four hour and even month thing back to the day and minute charts once on time. Yeah, very good point, Bob. Um, and, you know, from a longer term trade perspective, perfect. You, you're sort of looking at the four hour charts because the hour, hourly charts are, are less significant. And the monthly chart will give you. Will you assist in, in seeing where the longer term trend is? It's, it's key. It's key to sort of like looking at different time frames to build up that overall picture and using maybe even a shorter term chart to get your to use as a trigger to get in. Uh, there's a, a couple of good EMAs that we use uh, at uh, PIA that we we use and and are pretty successful and, and uh, they're key to sort of the, the, the models that we build. So, you know, it's, it's uh, the four hour chart um, is a good chart and, you know, using the, the, the monthly to, uh, to get the overall trend, you know, very important. Um, popping back to uh, the groundwork the trading plan, developing your trading plan, there is so many systems out there, demo systems, or paper trading systems, as we used to call them, that allow you to put your plan into practice, put, put your strategy into practice. And this allows you to uh, spend time at little or no cost to yourself to develop your trading strategy to know that you've got a, a better chance of success than not. Um, so this, it's, it's really important to continue to work on your demo trading and paper trading even after you go live. Um, this can be because markets change. They, they're, they're never the same. They, they, they're like a, a growing beast that can, you know, very quickly, a strategy that's worked for, for, for weeks, months and years can very quickly stop working. Uh, so you have to be analyzing that strategy all the time 
Um, and it goes down to the, the, you know, you can have money management skills put in place, which we're kind of come to, that could um, quickly allow you to realize that things aren't working and gives you then time to go back to the drawing board and get something and work on something that's going to work again. Uh, Felix has asked what paper trading is. Paper trading is uh, something that us old boys used to do before the, uh, the demo trading, demo platforms came along. Paper trading, we'd sit there literally with a book and a pencil and paper and every time we watch the market price and you'd write down where you'd buy it, where you'd sell it. Now, this was a, uh, as, as I said, demo trading, demo platforms have made it a lot easier. So you don't have to go through the, um, the rigmarole of sharpening your pencil and rubbing out all the stuff that you've written down, pretending you didn't trade at that level after it had gone against you. So it's just a, a way, paper trading is a way of uh, working out what's worked, what you think's worked without risking any money. Uh, demo platform. Uh, live trading is the next step and it's not an easy step. That's where money management skills and psychology hit you like a punch in the face <laughs> if you don't do it properly. So um, let's go to money management while I've got a picture of myself getting hit in the face. Uh, money management is very key. Obviously, trading strategy is right, great. Your money management is wrong, then the trading strategy isn't going to work. So money management has to be right. Most traders fail to make money because they haven't got enough capital. That's the bill on end all. Uh, a lot of traders think, right, I'm going to do this full time now. They've been in a job, they've been successful trading part-time, they've been in a job for a long while, I think someone mentioned it, uh, Pam mentioned it, uh, giving up a day job to be a full-time trader, but not really yet. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of things, you know, you can sort of, you can go through life and, and have that approach and, you, and you know, you, you, trading could be a nice, uh, nice source, additional income could be great, uh, and you might, have regrets later on in life. You might not. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, you could easily, uh, if you're happy, then the psychology of trading, you've got, you've got that wrapped up in a bag, perfect. Why change it? Um, unless you just think you're underachieving your potential, then, you know, then the, the key to it is to make sure you've got enough capital to cover you for at least a year. That's, I mean, it's when, when we were uh, trading traders before, I've traded, trained lots of traders in my life. Uh, and one of the key things when people came to me and, and they said, they were, a lot of them were from university, maybe graduates, and, and they, they didn't have great outgo, they didn't have big outgoings, so uh, it was a little bit easier for them. But then some guys who were successful in one line of business or other would come to us and they'd say, I'd like to trade my own money, trade my own account. And they said, here, I've got X amount of pounds. And I'd say, well, that's not enough. What you need is whatever you think you need, you need to double that because you, you have to consider that you're not going to make money for at least a year. And now that was 10 years ago I was talking about that. I think it's the same still applies. You've got to not have the external pressure again again this goes into psychology so i'll leave that for a for five minutes we've only got five minutes left guys but if i run over hopefully it won't be too much of an issue if it is we'll pick up on it next time um so I'll, I'll try and be brief on these capital has to be enough you have to cover yourself for at least a year not have the worry or stress of not earning enough money trading target you've got to have a clear target of what you're trying to achieve every morning that you sit in front of the screen or every morning that you enter a trade or every trade that you enter. You have to have a clear target. You have to have a clear stop. These are essential because if, this, if you move your target or you move your stop at the inopportune time, then uh, your model or your, your um, 
your trade strategy is being affected. Um, great quote from the floor, stops or for buses. Now, this would be uh, mentioned by a trader who is well offside on a trade and who you'd say to him, oh, where's your stop? You've got to, you know, you're, you're sort of, you're bleeding here, where's your stop? And, you know, a, a comical reply would be stops are for buses, which they're not. We all know that stops are so important nowadays. You have to contain your losses. Um, if you don't contain your losses, then you won't be around for long. Um, you know, I've got some good friends who are fantastic traders on the floor and, um, you know, had this approach of, if I don't get out, then, you know, I can't lose money. Okay, but, you know, it, 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 it may work for a short period of time, but we definitely would veer anyone away from that type of uh, risk profile. Have your target, make sure your target is at least twice your stop, uh, a lot of people talk for at least one to one a risk reward. So that's, so I'm looking to make 10 points. My stop is 10 points lower. But I would say for a good trading strategy, you at least have to have a two to one risk reward strategy. So every time you trade, you've got to be looking to make double what you're afford, what you're looking to risk. It's a, it's a, it's a good strategy. And then you, you're, you can develop your trading plan or trading, trading strategy to go to increase that. You, you could find a model or build a strategy which looks to maybe make four to one. So, you know, effectively a four to one trading strategy, you get one out of four trades right, you're flat. You get four out of four trades right, you know, you can then have 16 losers. You know, so it's, it's, it's all maths, it's all easy to work out. And learn from your mistakes. We all make mistakes. Uh, I'm still making mistakes now. I'm training for way too long. And I'm still making mistakes. And, I, you know, I, I accept the mistakes at the end of the day. I don't dwell on them, you know. Um, but ideally, learn from them. Don't, you know, the, I make mistakes, but they're not as big as they used to be. So, um, yeah, think about that. Right, well, very quickly, a couple of minutes left. Um, psychology. Now, this is a whole, oh, I could speak about psychology. I'm not a psychologist. I've got to just put that disclaimer out there. <laughs> um, trading psychology uh, for, for a long time. It's, it's, a, it's a real roller coaster. There is, you can't put enough, I can't put enough stress on how important psychology is. That is where the mistakes come from. That is, if you can't control your emotion, you're gonna to struggle to make money. Even if you have the best trading strategy in the world, if you can't control the emotion, then you're gonna panic out. You're gonna get out of a, a potential winning trade. It's gonna happen. Now, um, I'll wrap up very quickly. I'm sorry to do that, but uh, obviously I'm, I'm thinking about the time. Uh, the main emotions to control are fear and greed. Fear is that is uh, can quickly turn into anger and and egotistical trading. Uh, pressure affects psychology. If you start trading with not enough capital to fund your trading account and to support you. The pressure is going to get to you very quickly. You're going to make some bad choices, bad decisions, because you're going to have to, because you're trying to make money. It goes back to having a job and trading part time. It, it does. It, it takes that little bit of pressure off to make the money, so you can be trading the sideline. Obviously, you can't watch the markets full time then, so you're a part time trader. But you know, if it works, it works. Maintaining discipline at all times. Do not move your stop. That is key. Your stop is there, you picked your stop for a reason, it's part of your strategy, you cannot move your stop. We all get sucked into it now and then. Um, but you know, that's the trade idea, that's your trade strategy. If it doesn't work, it's just one of those trades that hasn't worked, it doesn't matter, move on to the next trade, look for the next opportunity. If you've got a trading strategy that is working, stick to it. Acceptance, it's basically accepting that not every trade is going to be a winner. 
you're, you're not going to win every trade. Accept that. Doesn't matter. You have losers. You learn from the losers. You've got your trading plan written down. It's all, you know, you, you, you're going to get that, you know, and yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things that we've got to accept that um, we're not going to make money all the time. But if your trading strategy is right and you control everything and you're disciplined and you handle the pressure, <clears throat> you can then accept that you're going to do well trading. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it today, guys. Um, I, I've enjoyed it. I've, um, and I look forward to maybe next time going into a, uh, a few other things, talking about market psychology, analysis, and a trading plan. So um, I'll, uh, I'll have a little think and maybe develop uh, something for next week or the week after. Ian might be with you next week. But uh, we'll have uh, – actually, no, Ian's not here next week. So I'll maybe I'll um, – if, if I get good feedback from today, I'll just roll on to the points I haven't missed today. So uh, happy trading, everyone, and uh, look forward to seeing you all soon. Thanks.